you may want to lean in for this one. Because what just happened might be remembered as the moment the global tech order began to shift. Permanently. After years of tension, restrictions, and tit-for-tat sanctions, China has officially banned all foreign-made chips, including those from Intel and AMD, from its government systems. Now, that might sound like another headline in the ongoing US-China tech feud, but this move, this is something much bigger. It's a declaration, a message to the world that China believes it no longer needs Western technology to power its future. And in the process, it might have just redrawn the global map of technological power. Before we unpack that, if you're finding this story insightful so far, don't forget to leave a like and share this video. It really helps the channel reach more people who care about how global economics and technology are reshaping our world. All right, let's dive deeper. For decades, Intel and AMD chips were the beating heart of China's digital infrastructure. Government servers, university labs, telecom systems, you name it. The two American chip makers dominated almost every sector that mattered. It was a mutually beneficial relationship. The US supplied the brains, China supplied the scale. But behind that cooperation, Beijing always knew it was vulnerable. Each chip that came from the West was a reminder that a critical part of China's technological backbone wasn't really under its own control. So while the world was busy talking about trade deficits and tariffs, China was quietly laying the foundation for something far more strategic, technological independence. And now, after years of preparation, that plan has finally become policy. According to reports from Chinese ministries, all government institutions and state-owned enterprises must now phase out Intel and AMD chips, replacing them with domestic alternatives. This isn't a temporary reaction, it's a structural decoupling. What's replacing them? Chips designed by Huawei, built by Smike, and optimized entirely within China's own ecosystem. Think about how remarkable that is for a second. Just five years ago, when Huawei was blacklisted and cut off from US technology, most analysts predicted the company's downfall. Without access to American chip designs or cutting-edge lithography tools, how could it possibly survive, let alone compete? But Huawei didn't die, it adapted. It reinvented itself. With heavy government backing, it poured resources into its own chip architecture, creating the Kunpeng and Ascend series. At the same time, SMIC, China's largest semiconductor foundry, began pushing the limits of what was thought possible without Western tools. Everyone said it couldn't be done. You couldn't reach seven nanometer class chips without EUV lithography from the Dutch company ASML. Yet somehow, SMIC engineers figured out how to get there using older technology, what's called deep ultraviolet or DUV machines. And now the results are undeniable. Huawei's chips are running everything from servers to AI clusters. SMIC is expanding production capacity faster than ever. And China's message is loud and clear. We can build our own future, thank you very much. Now, to be fair, many in the West see this move as retaliation, payback for years of export bans and tech sanctions from Washington. But that's not how it's being portrayed inside China. There, it's seen as a rebirth, the final step in a journey towards self-reliance. It's a story of turning adversity into strength. Each time the US restricted access to key technologies, it unintentionally gave Beijing the motivation and political cover. It needed to go all in on domestic innovation. In a way, Washington's strategy backfired. Because now, China's tech industry has evolved to a point where it doesn't just survive without Western chips, it's starting to thrive. And let's not underestimate what this means for Intel. For years, China was one of Intel's largest markets accounting for nearly a quarter of its global revenue. Losing those government and enterprise contracts isn't just a financial hit, it's a loss of strategic presence. Intel's factories in Arizona and Ohio are still under construction. Its turnaround plan is expensive and slow. And now, the company has to face the fact that one of the biggest markets on earth just closed its doors. Wall Street has already taken notice. Analysts are calling China's decision a potential black swan event for U.S. semiconductors. Investors are nervous, and rightfully so, because this isn't just about Intel's earnings next quarter. It's about whether American chip companies can remain relevant in a world that's splitting in two. This is where things get truly fascinating. We're entering a new era, a bipolar tech world. On one side, you'll have the U.S. and its allies, Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, TSMC and ASML, 
continuing to push cutting-edge innovation. On the other, a rising Chinese ecosystem led by Huawei, Samexi, and a growing web of domestic suppliers all aligned with Beijing's long-term industrial strategy. Two supply chains, two standards, two visions of digital sovereignty. And as that divide deepens, emerging economies, especially in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, are watching closely. They've long depended on Western technology, but it's expensive. Now, Chinese alternatives are getting cheaper, better, and easier to integrate. And for many nations, it won't be about ideology. It'll be about access and affordability. Whoever offers them affordable computing power, AI capabilities, and cloud infrastructure will win their loyalty. And China, for the first time, is in a position to do exactly that. By the way, what do you think? Is China's move a smart step toward independence? Or a risky gamble that might isolate its tech industry in the long run? Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear your take on this one. Now, back to the bigger picture. This shift didn't happen overnight. It's the result of over a decade of long-term planning. The real turning point came with the Xinchuang program, roughly meaning IT application innovation. Launched several years ago, it set a national goal. By 2027, all critical government and enterprise IT systems must run entirely on domestic hardware and software. That meant no more Windows, no more Intel, no more dependents. At first, it seemed ambitious, even impossible. But step by step, the pieces fell into place. Banks, energy companies, telecoms, and ministries started replacing Western chips with local ones. By the time the West realized what was happening, the transition was already well underway. And today, that program has turned into a national movement, a full-fledged digital sovereignty campaign that's reshaping China's tech identity. Here's the irony. The U.S. sanctions were meant to slow China down. Instead, they forced China to learn how to do everything itself. Every barrier became a lesson, every restriction an incentive. So now, when Washington says, you can't have this, Beijing responds, we don't need it anymore. That's not defiance, that's evolution. And it's one reason why this moment might be remembered, not just as a turning point for China, but for the entire global technology system. Because for the first time in decades, the world no longer runs on one single digital supply chain. It's splitting right down the middle. Let's think about what that means. The age of globalization, where chips were designed in California, made in Taiwan, and assembled in China, is ending. Instead, we're seeing the birth of two parallel ecosystems, each with its own chips, software, operating systems, and even AI frameworks. Western AI runs on NVIDIA and CUDA. Chinese AI runs on Huawei's Ascend and Mindspore. And soon, those two worlds may become as incompatible as iOS and Android once were. Only this time, the stakes are much higher. Because whoever controls the chips controls the data, the algorithms, and ultimately, the future of global power. In a way, this moment marks the end of unchallenged American tech dominance. For decades, Silicon Valley was the uncontested center of innovation. But now that spotlight is shifting eastward to Shenzhen, Shanghai, and Chengdu. China isn't just catching up anymore. It's building an entirely new playbook. For Intel, this is more than a business loss. One that blends state power, industrial planning, and national pride to achieve digital sovereignty. It's the symbolic end of an era an era when American chips ruled the world, and no one dared to imagine an alternative. That world is gone. As we look ahead, the question becomes, what happens next? Will the two systems learn to coexist, perhaps even cooperate in specific areas like green tech or AI ethics? Or are we heading toward full confrontation, a digital cold war where every byte of code and every silicon wafer becomes part of a geopolitical chess game? No one knows for sure, but, but one thing is clear, the global tech order will never return to the way it was. The digital iron curtain is here, and behind it, a new technological superpower is emerging. If you found this breakdown insightful, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss future deep dives like this one. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay curious and stay informed.